areas where the Department of Education uh, is, is naturally and immediately engaging. And I would say that the Park Service is making some great um, inroads there. Julia Washburn, who is the Associate Director for, uh, this isn't the exact title, but it's Interpretation in Education, um, has identified some counterparts at the Department of Education. So uh, there's an example of a federal agency that I think is making some great progress. Um, and then I just mentioned the transportation funding. Um, you know, I think that there are probably opportunities in all our work uh, to look at that barrier. That, that should not be a barrier um, that we accept um, to keep students from these experiences. And then lastly, I would just say, you know, the timing is, I think the timing is right. Because we've been under such a testing paradigm, uh, one of the things that that has revealed is that we're still missing the mark. And so I think the pendulum is going to shift a bit towards uh, not the ends, but the means, right? So what works in education if, if we've tested enough to realize that we're not getting there? Then what works in education and how can we be part of the solution? Um, there's a lot of talk about STEM learning, science, technology, engineering, and math, and a lot of money from the private side being put into STEM learning by groups like Intel, um, businesses like Intel. Well, getting, building a boat and getting it to float is a prime example of an activity that these kids would do in school as part of a STEM program. So there are natural connections, and I think we're at a good time um, once we get beyond our elections to look at some policy shifts that connect us directly to schools as eligible partners under our federal education laws. So um, I would just offer, offer those thoughts, and I'd be glad to take any questions. I think um, it probably makes sense to get to the end of the panel, and we'll do some questions. Thank you. Our third panelist is uh, Eliza Russell. She is uh, the Director of Education Programs for the National Wildlife Federation and directs their educational outreach activities, including habitat, volunteer, and youth programs. She's implemented education programs that have been successful in increasing student participation in science-based learning. She's worked in the nonprofit field, both with the U.S. government and independent organizations, and worked at the National Park Service as a park ranger at Women's Rights National Historic Park, one of uh, Congressman Burton's uh, parks like Golden Gate was, where I used to work. And uh, she also has become a member of the lead staff in uh, opening the U.S. Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C., another amazing uh, experience, I'm sure. Plus. Thank you. I'm just going to take a couple minutes to talk about the National Wildlife Federation. We have to always start with the infamous, do you actually know who the National Wildlife Federation is? So we asked the question, how many of you received the Ranger Rick magazine as a child? Hands? How many of you know who Ranger Rick is? And do not think that he's a park ranger. <laughs> Although I do have my hats still from my park service time, that is for sure. Great testimonies because nobody I bet can hear can say, does anybody know, except for park service folks, where Women's Rights National Historical Park is? Is it Seneca Falls? Ah. Is it Seneca Falls? Seneca Falls. Yeah. Does anybody know where the Finger Lakes is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's actually where I grew up. So when you read a little bit about my background, you went, Wow, she knows nothing of an environmental background in her career. <laughs> I came to the environment through the fact that I grew up on a farm. How many of we, us are farm kids? Okay, a few of us out there. I, so nature was my piece, so when they always ask, did you spend time outside? When you ask a farm kid that, you're like, when didn't I spend time outside? <laughs> Tell me if I was actually always having fun outside that sometimes. <laughs> Chickens and I have a very weird relationship, so we won't go there. Um, the other piece about working on the side that I do from an educational perspective, you might think Park Service, you worked at the Holocaust Museum, I also worked at a children's museum. My real focus that I brought to the National Wildlife Federation was we need to be people focused. 
So the answer is, that is what I am bringing. We wish, we want the environment to be protected, we want animals to be around, we want wildlife to be here for generations to come, but who is it that actually has to do that? Is it the raccoon that, it, that drives our organization? He is a, he's a tool that I get to use to motivate people, but the ultimate is I have to have people. So part of that with National Wildlife Federation is we have curriculum, we have great educational programs, we have policy programs, we are conservation, but you know the one thing we don't have? We don't have places. We have never owned places. We are not a place-based organization. So when you hear some of the panelists talk about how they use different components, the nice thing about Frank, because he's a similar to us, is he doesn't have places. But we bring to the table some interesting partnership concepts and how we utilize people who have places bringing people together. And so working in coalitions has always been a part of ours and education coalitions are also that. We and the National Wildlife Federation are a little insane at the moment. And I'm gonna tell you why. We just set a three-year goal, thanks to Kevin Coyle and Larry Schweiger, and it's a really ambitious goal, and we're going to need everybody's help. But the program I'm really going to talk about that was based on um, collaboration and partnership today is really what that is about. In the next three years, being that 2012 being the first year, NWF has set and is going to reach 10 million children that are new critical word, new to the environment, having regular, another critical word, time outside in three years. So for those of you who are policy folks, for those of you who are program folks, you went, she said new and she said regular. That means that as we begin to look for partnerships, we are readjusting our partnership lenses to not only bring along those agencies who we have worked with, who are environmental organizations, who are already doing amazing things with children, but that new is, is that as 10 million new kids who have not been going outside. So that doesn't mean that I can sit back and say, you know what, I'm gonna count all the kids that go to the park service today. They don't count. I can't unfortunately count all the kids that Frank has been able to motivate to be fishing. I can't count the National Baltimore Aquarium, how many know the National Aquarium, and how many kids they get. Well, guess what, they're our new affiliate. I can't count some of those kids because they are getting outside already. And regular, we up the standard. So from an educational perspective, 60 minutes is what has been promoted. You need 60 minutes of unstructured play. But that's also from a health aspect. We upped it to you need 90 minutes of regular time outside in a week from an educational perspective. Part of that can be physical. Part of that needs to be educational. Because ultimately, that's where we're trying to get to is set of stewards. They need to have regular engagement, learning, as well as physical, to be able to collaborate. So one of the tools that we see that we can use in addition to our educational programs, you can go to our website, you'll see lots of the different tools and aspects that we can provide if you're not familiar with them, whether they're schoolyard habitat, our certified wildlife habitat program, eco schools, or a variety of opportunities that we provide we began to think about what different other types of partnerships. So Derek had a great conversation with Prince William County School District. Does anybody in the room know where Prince William County School District is? Yeah. For those of you who are not from Virginia, that would be Manassas. How many of you at least have heard about the National Park in Manassas? Civil War, Battlefield. <laughs> If you're in the East Coast, that's what the Park Service is getting to do a lot on now is the Civil War for the next few years. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> in real time. In real time, yes. Lots of reenactments going on. Prince William County School District is one of the fastest growing school districts in the U.S. 
they are one of the most diverse school districts in the U.S. They also happen to be not one of the richest school districts in the U.S. They have a lot of Title I kids. They have a lot of kids who are on food programs. So Derek came to us and then to the school district. But how many of you have actually gone school by school? How many of you have relationships with a school or multiple schools and principals? How many of you have relationships actually at the administrative level of a district? Few. That is in line with what Derek's doing. That is where we had had to elevate to. You move up to a school district because guess who is controlling what is happening at those individual schools? Superintendent. The superintendent and the school district. What hat is a school district wearing nowadays? They are a business. First and foremost, they are a business. They are making sure budgetary goals are met. They are making sure education goals are met. But they are a business, and they are looking for strikes and misses. Just like any of you who are in the public sectors, just like you who are in private business, they are strikes and misses. That is how our education system is at the moment. So when Derek approached the school district, he really talked to them on why would you want to get your kids outside from a business perspective? What does this actually impact? And he had a great strategy from the initial conversation. He went in and he said, there's three things you need to achieve. One is you need more partners to come into your diversification of who is accessible to the kids to know. You need help with the teachers from an education perspective. They need additional resources. They can't do it themselves. They're tapped out because they're focused on education. SOLs. SOLs, which is standards of, standards of, learning. of learning. That is what drives them. What is that principal in that school held accountable to? Passage of SOLs. Passage of SOLs. If he doesn't pass, does he have a job? No. no. You can be the best principal in the world. You can have the kids love you to death. But we have gone to a business model of schools. The answer is you do not succeed if you do not pass. And you are gone. So when Derek approached them, we're bringing how can we help to think about improving your test scores. You heard from Jason. Study after study, based in California, based in other words, kids who have tactile, hands-on, Experiential learning, learn the best. Guess what provides it the most for science, technology, engineering, math, English, physical education, and health? The outdoors. But we, just like everyone has said, we never brought it to them. How many of you have only talked about it from science? Outdoors equal science. Outdoors equal science. But it doesn't equal science. You guys learned your creativity and your writing skills from the outdoors. You learned your English skills by learning different names. You learned informational reading, which is the hardest thing the teachers have to teach nowadays, is informational reading. Because guess what you all do 90% of your time? You informationally read. Those skills is how Derek began to sell what we help to create what is called Ed Out. So in your packets, there's a flyer about Ed Out. What made it interesting that you guys can use is it's a school district approach to model. So going and selling it to the top level of the administration and having their support from the beginning. So they brought in not the coordinator, or two coordinators of the science program, you got the head of the science program for the district. You got the head of the physical education. And you got a VP. So you had buy-in at the top, who said, if you can make this work by providing and taking away three factors from us. One is we have no money. So if you want us to pony up money for this, the answer is you can walk out the door. But if you can bring some funds to help pay for 
transportation. If you can bring partnership to the table 